Former President Donald Trump and the Republican contender for president is distancing himself from some of the racist remarks made by some of the speakers at his Madison Square Garden rally. They shared the stage with the former president here in New York on Sunday. The slurs threatened the Latino vote for Trump. The former president held a rally in Allentown, Pennsylvania, a city with a large Hispanic population urged by some allies to apologize for racist comments made by speakers at his weekend rally, notably a comedian. Donald Trump took the opposite approach. The former president said it was an honor to be involved in such an event, and it called it a scene of a love fest. Addressing a large gathering of Hispanic population, Trump said that he loves Latinos. Take a listen. And I'm so proud that we're getting support from Latinos like never before. We're setting every record. Hispanics, Latinos, nobody loves our Latino community and our Puerto Rican community more than I do. Nobody. You know, it's interesting because I've done more for Puerto Rico than any president by far, nobody close. I provided historic funding and the hospital ship when we had, they were hit with a couple of really bad ones right in the road. We got the ship over there and with thousands of rooms, actually. It was amazing. A floating hospital, the biggest in the world. The former president gathered supporters and reporters to his Mar-a-Lago resort two days after a massive rally at Madison Square Garden. It featured a number of crude remarks by various speakers, including a set by a comedian in which he joked that Puerto Rico was a, quote, floating island of garbage. With just a week before Election Day, some Trump allies have voiced alarm that the rally, which was supposed to highlight the Republican presidential nominee's closing message in grand New York fashion, was a distraction and even a liability given the electoral importance of Puerto Rican voters who live in Pennsylvania and other key swing states. Democrat Kamala Harris vowed to put the country over party and warned that Donald Trump is obsessed with revenge and his own personal interests, addressing a sea of crowd near the White House. Kamala slammed Trump, saying he pushed the politics of division to make inroads. America, we know what Donald Trump has in mind. More chaos, more division and policies that help those at the very top and hurt everyone else. I offer a different path, and I ask for your vote. And here is my pledge to you. I pledge to seek common ground and common sense solutions to make your life better. I am not looking to score political points. All right. For more on this, we are now being joined by Mark Marowitz, professor at State University of New York Maritime College. He's also a political analyst and lawyer. He's joining us from New York. Mark, great to see you. And I'm really happy to talk to you about this important subject. How do you look at the closing arguments of the former president and Vice President Harris as they make their last minute pitch in swing states and also the one that Harris made in Washington last night. I mean, uh, let's be realistic. And there's actually an interesting piece in the Wall Street Journal today by Jason Riley. He's looking at the closing arguments from the economic point of view. And Harris, her, she has no economic arguments. And what you just quoted, she's got a different path. She even says she has a to-do list. But what's on the to-do list? In other words, what's different about what Biden did than what she's going to do? When she was asked about this in an interview, she said, I can't think of anything that's different. Uh, what she ended up with is attacking Trump and her campaign, tr attacking Trump as a fascist. And Tim Waltz saying that the uh, rally in Madison Square Garden that you alluded to is actually reminiscent of the rally in the World War II period of the Nazi party in the Madison Square Garden in, the, um, in a different location in New York City. In other words, Trump is a threat to democracy, he's a fascist. This is what they are focusing on, the anti-Trump vote. And the only other policy that they've been talking about is women's rights and abortion to have Michelle Obama 
uh, on the stage arguing, well, women should vote for, for uh, Harris and the men uh, should support the women, so that's their te uh, technique. But at the same time, they're attacking mostly Trump uh, personally, and all these invectives are being hurled against Trump. So I didn't hear, even in the ellipse that you alluded to, that you talked about, she spoke very briefly. She had no substance whatsoever in her comment. And at the end of the day, her economic plan does not really, whatever it may be, does not hold water. Yeah, I mean, she did put out something because she was losing the black men vote that she would give incentives to African-Americans uh, for housing and whatnot. But then that turned out to be constitutionally, of course, inaccurate, considering the fact that you can't really do something based on race for a group of people and then not for another group. And she changed that. So you're right. It's been a mixed bag and we still don't know. So this comedian made a very distasteful joke at Madison Square Garden. But then President Biden, when asked about this distasteful joke against the Puerto Ricans, he said Trump supporters are garbage. So well, how do you see that? Now, there's a lot to this. First of all, uh, under our constitution, the residents of Puerto Rico cannot vote for president because they don't have any electoral votes. They're not a state. Secondly, the Hispanic community is very diverse in the United States. Uh, there are Cubans in Florida who support Trump enthusiastically. They're, they're a wide community. I'm sure there are Puerto Ricans in the United States who will support Trump. So this, this whole story about this, this speaker who made this terrible statement, which the Trump campaign disavowed, and by the way, Trump himself didn't say it. And then turning to the other side, Biden's statement, they said it's a gaffe, but Politico today says maybe it wasn't a gaffe. Maybe he wants to derail her campaign because of what he, they did to him. They kicked him out of the, the possibility to run. And that's, you know, that statement, supporters are garbage. Now they're saying, oh, no, no, he didn't mean all of the supporters of Trump are garbage. He means supporters, supporter apostrophe, yes, the one guy, Tony Hinchcliffe, he is a bad guy, but the rest of the supporters aren't, which brings back Hillary Clinton's statement about Trump supporters, if you remember, that they're all deplorables. And I think Biden's statement was very injurious, very injurious to Kamala Harris's campaign. It's a horribly stupid statement by the president. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? Uh, sitting in the White House, right behind Harris's speech on the ellipse, it's bizarre. The whole thing is bizarre. This election ends up deteriorating into dartboard, shooting darts at each other and saying terrible things about each other. And I think it, it doesn't benefit the American people. As far as the Hispanic community in the United States, they're a diverse community. And I don't think one comedian statement, which is awful and terrible and is disavowed, should change the, uh, the direction of this uh, campaign. And also, let's just move on. I mean, this is not significant. I don't think it is. It's bad. It's horrible. It was condemned. And let's move on. Similarly, condemn the statements of calling Trump a fascist. That's a very, very horrific accusation and and has no connection whatsoever to reality it is it's ridiculous yeah that basket of deplorables by hillary clinton and then trump supporters are garbage by president biden you know these are the it, things that stick in voters minds and of course that distasteful comic by the comedian was denounced immediately by the trump campaign perhaps not the former president himself mark it's always great to talk to you thank you so much for joining us thank you very much